Well, I'm doing a meme. I hope you guys are happy. So, um, these, uh, these tier things I've been seeing a lot of people do are very popular right now. You basically just take stuff and rank it from S to whatever. Uh, a lot of YouTubers are doing it. And I actually put it out on Twitter if people want me to do one. And uh, people were kind of enthusiastic about it. So here we are. We're doing a tier maker. Um, you can go to this site if you want to try it yourself. It's tiermaker.com. And they have a bunch of pre-made ones for all different kinds of things. They have video games, sports, TV shows, etc. Uh, I think you can make them yourself but i'm far too lazy to do that right now so i just found a pre-made one now people wanted me to do like obscure cartoons or 80s cartoons and stuff like that you know the stuff i'm i typically deal with uh surprisingly though i was going through like all the cartoon ones there is no 80s list how is that even possible there's no 80s cartoons list. And I Wow, man, someone's got to get on that. So um, there were a lot of other cartoon ones. There's like hottest female character, all, all that stuff. So for this video, I decided to go with just... Um, the, the title of this is 70s to 2000s cartoons. But uh, I, some people didn't do their research because some of this is... Uh, a uh, bit off, but, um, yeah, so this is basically the biggest one, and, uh, there's all the ones down there, look at all those, now, I've not really looked at those, uh, too, too long, I wanted this to kind of be a surprise as much as possible, um, but I, I did glance at some of these, and some of them are a bit odd, and, uh, some are, you know, kind of fun, and, I'm going to rate them because that's what you do with these things. So anyway, here's the, uh, here's the tiers. This is how it was. Um, SS before it's time. Epic. Uh, S top tier for it's time. A great. Good. Uh, do not, not up to par with the rest. Probably good, but not, you know, as good. Hell no, which is my favorite one. Uh, never watched. I like that there's a never watched tier right there so that i can put stuff that i might not even i'm not familiar with i think i saw a few things on here i didn't recognize or i i just know that i i never got around to watching uh na not my era you know i'm not even gonna bother with that one because like not my era really doesn't mean anything like there's a lot of stuff that i used to watch that was way before my time because they always showed it on tv so you know just because it's not your era doesn't mean you can't you know have an opinion on it or have not seen it you know and then uh shake my head don't see what all the hype is about uh i guess that's for uh, that's like the overrated category so uh yeah uh i don't i'm probably not gonna make too much use out of these bottom two but we'll keep them anyway uh the hell no i can't wait to get to some of those all right so we got a lot to go through here so uh, we'll keep it uh keep it nice and simple uh let's actually let me let me move it down just a little bit so we can have a good look at the uh the stuff on the bottom row the top row here rather all right let's begin oh god <laughs> um alvin and the chipmunks i presume they meant to put the uh the cartoon the the tv show alvin and the chipmunks here that is clearly the uh, CGI to live action uh, films, Alvin and the Chipmunks. So uh, here's the deal, guys. Uh, I'm basically a lot of things on here are um, they're kind of like like it's a character, but it's a it could be a character from many different series. Uh, so I'm basically just gonna go with what they put on the uh, as a little icon here. So. I liked Alvin and the Chipmunks when I was a kid. I liked the 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 80s cartoon. I even remember watching some of the like the older like the original Alvin and the Chipmunks ones like the was it done by UPA or something like that? The uh, like the the ones they used to like rerun on like Nickelodeon shows, you know. Um and you know, they were all right. Uh I never really got into the Chipmunks. Uh however, because they put the Chipmunks movie icon here 
that's going in hell no. <laughs> if if this was the cartoon, I'd probably give it a good, maybe, or maybe uh, B or D. I'm not really sure. I just noticed that there's no C. Huh. Somebody screwed up on making these. All right, well, there we go. We're not off to a good start. However, the next thing is Animaniacs. You know, some shows age like milk. But there are those few, you know, really good shows that age like fine wine. And that is Animaniacs. Animaniacs is a perfect example of a show that not only ages well, but it can be enjoyed by just about anybody. Animaniacs is, it's, it's like, as a kid, you watch it and you enjoy, you know, the characters and the songs and the funny gags and everything. You watch it as an adult and you pick up on all those naughty bits the the writers put in. <laughs> Uh, Animaniacs is so good. It's it's funny. It's it's still funny to this day. It's uh, a very well crafted, uh, well produced show. Great voice cast. Still funny. Uh, still iconic. People still talk about it. Rob Paulson uh, absolutely uh, will discuss this to no end on Twitter. Uh, I don't know how they're gonna deal with the reboot. I believe the reboot's coming out in 2020. So. We'll see how that goes, but uh, as for the original show, that is S-Rank. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is, when I'm done with this, I'm going to probably do the S-Rank, like like go through the S-Ranks, and maybe pick one as like the greatest of all time. And uh, we'll see. It depends on how long this takes, because I have a feeling we're going to have... Uh, we're going to be here a while. I may, I may chop up this video. I'm not really sure. Anyway, moving on. Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh my god. This show is was insane and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um not too many bad episodes. Like it got kind of worse as, you know, seasons went on. They eventually, you know, canceled, which they, you know, honestly probably should have uh, long before that, but god, I love Aqua Teen Hunger Force. The voice acting, the the humor, the just bizarre nature of it is so good. I, my favorite episode has got to be um, the one where they chop off Carl's head and they keep trying to put him on, put it on to different things <laughs> to give him a, a body. Uh, if you've never seen that one, look it up. Um, yeah, so many good ones. Uh, I'm going to put this one as great. Yes, this one is definitely great. It's not, you know, Animaniacs tier of humor but god it, it's it's so much fun to watch okay next is arthur um i actually never watched arthur believe it or not i think it was a little bit after my time as you know the the age bracket that it's intended for uh so i never watched it during its original run however um i used to have a uh, well i say used to you know, we're still friends on twitter uh, I had a friend who used to stream cartoons every week and I used to go there and hang out and um, he did, he did a night where he showed some Arthur and you know what? It's a good show. It's a good show. It's a, you know, it's a wholesome show. They, they, you know, still talk about it to this day. Peanut butter gamer loves it. So um, that's something. Uh, so, you know, it's an important show. It's a PBS show. They had Mr. Rogers on an episode. That was kind of cool. Um, there was one bit from it that, uh, I'm trying to remember. There was a, sh a version of it. They had like little short clips online and I actually did look one up and I thought it was really good. There was like this bully character in the show, uh, some girl with like hair in front of her face or whatever. And, um, she had like, uh, she was like her little sibling who was like bullying someone on the playground and uh, she was like, "Hey, you shouldn't be doing that." And he's like, "And she's like, oh yeah, well you do that." And then she was like, "Yeah, well I probably shouldn't do that." So that that was like interesting, like character development for that character, and I I, I kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna put Arthur in good. It probably should be great if I had more of an attachment to it, but it is a very good show, so I'm gonna leave it right there. Uh, by the way, disclaimer. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on this list here that 
you know, I'm probably going to have a much different opinion about than other people. So just be aware of that. This is my list. Keep that in mind. This is my list. These are my opinions. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, one of the best shows ever. Um, I actually didn't watch Avatar. Well, I didn't I didn't watch the first two seasons of Avatar when they first aired. I watched... Um, I actually came in during season three. And uh, I, I marathoned season one and two. And then I watched season three. And man, this show really impressed me. Like, I didn't really think much of it when it first came out. I remember, like, the first promos of it. It was like, oh, what is this? Some, some, some stupid American cartoon trying to be anime or whatever. And uh, it's really good. It is absolutely one of the best shows ever. I, I think anyone who's seen it knows. I'm going to put Avatar where it belongs in the S rank because it's so good. It's got complex characters, a very imaginative world, a, a very, very great world built on a very simple comp, uh, like, like idea too. So that, that's something else. When you take just like, Oh, is this the four elements or whatever? And then just, you know, build something amazing around it. That, uh, that is definitely worthy of respect. And on top of that, just, you know, the characters are great. That's got great humor, uh, the, the designs are amazing. The action is great. Just, it's great. It does it actually great is over here. This is, this is top tier. This is, <laughs> this is, uh, one of the best. So it goes right there next to Animaniacs. All right. Whoop. Uh, next up that is Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. One of the best Marvel shows ever made. And it's a shame that we only got two seasons of it because it was really good. And then they had to go and replace it with uh, Avengers Assembled, which, uh, you know, they wanted, I guess, to make it look more like the MCU, which is stupid because it just confuses people. But, yeah, Earth's Mightiest Heroes was really, really good. Um, I wish there was more of it. Uh, where do I put it? Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is, the, like, the definitive Marvel show. And it, I think it was, like, one of the last times we got to see uh, a lot of the X-Men characters alongside, you know, Avengers and, like, uh, like the characters from MCU or the ones that are actually owned by Disney. Uh, well, we will again soon if, uh, you know, we, we get to see the mutants in the MCU, which, from what I hear, is going to take a while. But... Uh, Avengers, I'm trying to, is, is it belonging S or A? Hmm. I, you know what, that, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in S. It's probably more like low, like, I, I think it's a little bit below Avatar and Animaniacs, but, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it definitely belongs in S. Uh, speaking of which... <laughs> Next up, Batman the Animated Series, one of the first really, like, uh, mature shows intended for children. And I remember watching this all the time when it aired on Fox, which is interesting that it aired on Fox. But, um, yeah, uh, God, what do you say about Batman the Animated Series? Uh, it's considered one of the best for a reason. It has, you know, it, it, it's a show that takes its audience seriously. And I, I wish more shows would do that. Uh, I know there are a lot of great shows that do that. I think, you know, Avatar is one of them. Um, but just the, it's go, it's going an S. It's going, <laughs> it's just going an S. Uh, again, what can you say about this show that hasn't been said a million times? You know, it's great. It's it's considered one of the best for a reason. All right, what the hell is that? Um, is that Optimus Prime from Beast Wars? No, that's not Beast Wars. I think that's Beast Machines. Why the hell is that in here? <laughs> um, yeah, Beast Machines was not very good. Uh, Beast Wars is definitely better. Like I, I doubted Beast Wars. And I never watched Beast Wars when it originally aired, but uh, 
yeah, Beast Machines was just so. Eh. It's going in hell now. <laughs> uh, ugh. Beetlejuice. Oh wait, I just realized these are like in alphabetical order. That's why. That's why they're like this. All right, I guess that's fair enough. Um, Beetlejuice. Uh, I'm not going to say it again because he's going to show up. This show uh, I really liked as a kid. Uh, it's one of those times where I feel it, it was a very pun heavy show. And I feel like it, uh, it, it did puns well. Like it, it not only had a pun, but there was usually a visual gag associated with it. Like, uh, you know, Beetlejuice will say something. And, oh, I said it. Well, whatever. <laughs> he would say something, and then he would, like, turn into the pun. Or there'd be, you know, some kind of prop item nearby that was like that. And, um, you know, they, considering how mature the movie was, this this was a good, um, like, a good adaptation. Like, this is definitely one of the good movie adaptation uh, cartoons. So, Beetlejuice is gonna get see there were some good episodes but there were some that were like i remember the edgar Allan poe episode like that was that one was actually kind of creepy when i was a kid um my favorite one's got to be the uh, the one where they were in the video game because <laughs> the the weapons that lydia got was were like the worst <laughs> like she had a laser that just kind of came out and flopped down. And then she's like, my laser just lays there. <laughs> and she had a gun called an Uzi and all it just spewed like goop everywhere. It's like my Uzi oozes. <laughs> it's, it's like some of them were so stupid that it was just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, I'm going to put this in great because Beetlejuice, the, the animated series is really good. Also one of the best intros to any animated series just it's just so fun and crazy and uh, i just love it all right next up oh god <laughs> this um this is a show called bell and sebastian or sebastian and bell i don't remember which of the which it is um it's an uh it was like an anime from the 80s or po possibly the 70s i think my, my knowledge of this one's a bit spotty um I, I used to watch this on Nickelodeon when they reran, you know, old stuff on Nickelodeon when they were still a fairly new network. Like they, you know, they had Mysterious Cities of Gold and a bunch of other, you know, Euro shows from Europe and Japan. They aired them on like Nick Jr. and, you know, sometimes the regular Nickelodeon time slots. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really remember a whole lot about it. Like I remember liking it, but I, I like it's a boy and his dog. I guess it's like the anime version of Lassie or whatever. Um, and he had like another dog that like, like a little tiny adorable dog that lived in his backpack or something. And uh, I know there was like, like this is, I think it's based off a novel if I'm not mistaken. I think there was a couple of live action movies based on it as well. I would actually like to revisit this. This could potentially be a cartoon clip show subject. So, this one's kind of tough to rank. I... I'm going to put this... Because I do remember liking it. I'm going to put it in good. It's prob it, it's This one's going to get an asterisk next to it. Because it's... Uh, you know, like I said, I don't remember a whole lot about it. Plus, it's like, you know, an old, like, 80s anime. And those are usually kind of... Don't age very well. But uh, I, I, I'm going to put it here for now. Next up is Ben 10. And that is the current reboot Ben 10 that they made and completely botched as far as I'm concerned. Why did they remake Ben 10? Did we really need... Like, couldn't they just make another series based on... Like, the Ben 10 series has like a weird thing. Like, the first series was great. The second one, Alien Force, apparently a lot of people didn't like, but I think it's it was even better than the first one. Then uh, Ultimate Alien came out, and that was like a, kind of a step down. And then uh, was it Omniverse, and that was an even further step down. And this is uh, all the way at the bottom as far as I'm concerned. Uh, 
I'm going to put this in not up to par with the rest because it's definitely not as bad as these two right here. <laughs> but it's uh, it's definitely not that great. Uh, if, if this was one of the other Ben 10 series, the, the ranking would go up. But as of right now, you go in there, Ben. Deal with it. Beavis and Butthead. Awesome. I love Beavis and Butthead. Uh, I was not allowed to watch Beavis and Butthead, and yet I, uh, can, uh, I still watched it. Um, Beavis and Butthead. They, I remember they tried to bring it back uh, sometime in like the late 2000s, early 2010s, and uh, you know what? It was still pretty funny. It, it still wasn't bad. Um, the show itself was, you know, it, it was, it had its moments of hilarity, but we all watched it really for the music video segments, which, uh, were the best. And thankfully you can find a lot of them on YouTube and they are really funny. Like if you've never watched the Beavis and Butthead, like music video segments where they're just commenting on whatever weird crap MTV had in their storage locker, um, they, they're great. That part of the show was amazing. So, and, uh, Beavis and Butthead do America is a really, really funny movie too. So I am going to put them in great for making me, uh, disobey my parents watching, watching it when I wasn't supposed to bleach. <laughs> uh, again, there's some things on here that are just kind of odd. Um, bleach. I used to like Bleach, um, more so than a lot of other, you know, similar anime at the time. Um, I think I just like the concept of it. Unfortunately, it suffered from the same problem a lot of those anime did, where it just kind of dragged. Ugh. And eventually I ended up losing interest in it. Uh, I thought, you know, it was a cool idea, cool characters. Uh, I like the, the powers, I like the... I, I want to say I like the lore, but there wasn't a whole lot of lore. They just kind of, they just kind of ran with some ideas. I think, um, I did enjoy bleach. So I'm going to put it in good Bobby's world. Oh boy. Only nineties kids will remember this. <laughs> um, Bobby's world was a, it was a cute little kid show. Uh, it was uh, Howie Mandel doing uh the voices <coughs> excuse me doing the voices of uh bobby as well as himself who is bobby's father which is kind of a weird thing um yeah it, it was a cute little show uh it was pretty harmless too it was just about a kid who's using his imagination trying to deal with you know stuff that happens in his daily life it's like oh we're moving and then he'll imagine something weird uh, it's basically like what I assume Doug was like when he was a child, and I, I do believe Doug is on this list. It's probably coming up because the D's are here. Uh, Bo yeah, Bobby's World is... Uh, I'm going to put Bobby's World in good. Bobby's World was definitely good. It just wasn't, uh, you know, great. Bob's Burgers. Oh, boy. Here's where people are going to be mad at me. I'm not a huge fan of Bob's Burgers. I, I've i watched quite a bit of it. And I think it's pretty funny. But, man. People love this show. <laughs> and, like, I don't get it. Like, I, I kind of like the kids in the show. Like, I like, you know... You know, when they when they had an episode where they go on an adventure or something like that, those were really good. I like that. But I I don't know. Like, I can't... Uh, I never got into it. I, I hated the character design. And I, I like everyone involved with this show. Like, I, like, all the voice actors and everyone that, you know, they had guest star in the show, I think, is really were really great. Uh, John Benjamin is just naturally hilarious. Um... But I don't think it's terrible. It's definitely not going in hell, no. Uh, I'm actually tempted to put it in uh, Don't See What All the Hype is About. But, uh, man, I, I don't... I really don't get it. This is one of those controversial opinions. It's either going in D or uh, Don't See What the Hype is About. 
Uh, I'll just put it in D. Yeah, it's D. It's it's all right. I think it's all right, and a lot of you know, people are gonna be mad at me. I just think it's fine. All right, uh, let's move on. <clears throat> oh, brace face. Oh, that was. Oh, man, I, I vaguely remember the show. That is Alicia Silverstone, I think. And it was about a girl with braces. And that is literally all I know about that. <laughs> I remember seeing it around, but actually, I don't remember watching it at all, so I can't really say much about it. Hmm. I'm putting in a never watched because I never I never got around to watching it. So, yeah, Braceface is uh, I don't know. Maybe someone who's seen Braceface can tell me what why it's so great. Uh, anyway, moving on. Brave Star. They really could have picked some better, you know, screenshots or like thumbnails for this because, like like Brave Star's face is cut off here. He's the star of the show. He should be in the middle. Uh, anyway, Brave Star, uh, Filmation. I believe this was Filmation's last TV show before they eventually uh, started to collapse in on themselves, sadly. Um, it did have a lot of the same problems that, you know, all the other Filmation shows got. Where, you know, it looks good, but you can tell how cheap it is. Like, the character designs are great, and, you know, the, the movement's very fluid, but that's because it's rotoscoped. And they use that same animation over and over for everything. But the thing about it is Brave Star was kind of an interesting show because it was actually very progressive. Because he had a character who was basically a Native American or whatever the intergalactic equivalent of a Native American is. And he has a, you know, he has a, a, a mentor who's a Native American. You have a, a female who's a judge at the uh, little town that he, he you know, works at. Um, and 3030 was amazing. I love, I love 3030. 3030 is best pony. <laughs> um, oh yeah. And, um, believe it or not, this show had a somewhat complex villain too. Tex Hex actually got some backstory every once in a while. And it's, it's pretty tragic really. So I, I, like, it's easy to look at this show and, you know, say, oh, it's just a dumb 80s show. Uh, reason, uh, people saying stuff like that are the reason why Cartoon Clip Show exists. Um, Brave Star, I'm putting Brave Star in, in good. Although I would say that it's a, you know, a higher tier good for, you know, the reasons. And, um, you know, they, like I said, it was their last show. And uh, there were a lot of the same problems as, like, you know, He-Man and She-Ra and all the other Filmation shows. But there was also a lot of... You could tell, like, they improved a little bit. So, yeah. I'm actually... Uh, you know what? No, I'm putting it in great. Brave Star definitely deserves great. It says, yeah, if, uh, if you've never seen Brave Star, like, look it up. It's uh, very... It's very interesting how they, um, you know, Filmation started to grow ironically before they ended up uh dying um all right anyway oh god captain planet <laughs> captain planet he's a hero uh aren't they making a movie about this i could i could have sworn i heard something about a movie a captain planet movie hmm. i don't think it's gonna happen uh unless they get don Cheadle to be captain planet that's the only way i'll accept it Kudos to anyone that gets the reference. Anyway, Captain Planet. Uh, it was a very, it was a very fun show. Uh, you know the characters became very iconic. Um, it had a good you know message behind it. There was good morals to it. It was good. Good. It was made with good intentions. Um, however, I'm pretty sure that. A lot of the stuff that they talked about might have been inaccurate information. I have heard a lot of that. Like they, you know, they would say stuff that that you know was important, but also wasn't a huge 
a huge, you know, deal as, as much of a deal as they made it out to be. Uh, you know, it is important to recycle and not pollute and not litter and all that. But um, oftentimes they would, you know, they, they, they would go to extremes to try and convince people of that. And you really shouldn't do that. So I think I'm going to put Captain Planet in good. It's not great, but, you know, it's, it's good. It had, it had uh, good intentions. That's why it gets good. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, God. Uh, Care Bears. The original Care Bears, too. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't think I watched a whole lot of the Care Bears TV show when I was a kid. I remember the movies. I remember uh, the first movie with the talking book that was creepy as hell. Uh, that movie is actually, in my opinion, still pretty good today. Uh, I know they brought back Care Bears recently, and I was hoping that they would, you know, because when, when people watched it, I think they were expecting something with, you know, a little bit of maturity to it, like what they did with My Little Pony, and they didn't find it. I heard that the show, the new show was actually pretty boring, and I feel like that's what, that that's how you make the Care Bears good. You have to give them a bit of an edge, you know, have them literally fight Satan, you know, <laughs> they are beings of pure good. They need to fight a being of pure evil that is creepy and scary and terrorizing the world. And they have to protect it. That's, that's how you do something like this, right? So I think I'm going to put care bears under good. So they again it's again it's a show with good intentions but uh you know and and they did have that edge for a while but i know that as time went on the the movies got a little bit more tamer and the the show was uh, from what i remember the show was just kind of eh so i uh, i'm just going to leave it in good i think that that's the perfect spot for it centurions power extreme that is the catchphrase from that show. Used to watch this all the time. And uh, I'm going to be honest. The show was not too bad. It had a lot of action in it. The concept behind it was kind of ridiculous, though. <laughs> uh, it, the whole idea was, for, for the toy line at least, was um, why sell an action figure and a vehicle when the action figure could be the vehicle? <laughs> Uh, I believe Transformers did that better. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it was a show about these guys that had these suits with holes in them. And they would go, you know, like uh, there would be an evil... Uh, the, the the villain of the show is Doc Terror. Which, by the way, that's his real name, apparently. And he was this evil cyborg guy who wants to rule the world with robots. And they deploy the Centurions to stop him. And... The way the, sh the show worked, if you're not familiar with it, they have these suits with, like, holes all over them. So they'd be beamed down to wherever the trouble was. And then they would beam down weapons that would uh, actually, like, attach to the suits. And they'd have, like, you know, there was... W the, the Ace McCloud was the guy who used, like, all the flying weapons. Uh, Max Ray was the guy who fought in water. And Jake Rockwell was the land operating operations expert. I believe that's actually what his title was. Um, I do remember a lot about it. I like this show for one reason though, uh, for, well, there's a couple reasons I still kind of like it, but the main reason I like it was they did the PSA segments just like every other show, you know, you know how it is, but instead of having like, Oh, the morals for kids or whatever, they would actually have like science facts. Like they would learn, you'd learn about the planets and like how, you know, like high like hydroelectric power works and you know how how robotics works and all that kind of stuff that i really appreciated about the show even to this day so i'm putting centurions under good just just for that reason man the good tier is uh <laughs> is filling up uh i guess that's what happens when uh that's what happens when you you do this alphabetically uh, i don't know why Anyway, the Cleveland show. Uh, 
definitely gets a bad rap because it's, you know, it's a Seth MacFarlane show and a lot of people like to compare it to Family Guy. And uh, I feel like that's unfair because I, I feel like they tried a lot harder with this show. Like, I, I liked all the characters in it. Um, Family Guy, uh, God, Family Guy just gets worse and worse every season. And the, you know what? It, it might be a good thing that the Cleveland show ended so soon because then it too would have been tainted by like, uh, you know, all, all the problems family guys having. So, uh, yeah, I like, I, I like the Cleveland show. I'm putting it under good. Next is cops, central organization of police specialists. I, um, Hmm. I, well, I reviewed cops a long time ago. Um, I remember liking it and, uh, yeah, it actually is still pretty fun to watch, especially episodes that center around Berserko. <laughs> oh man. Berserko's big surprise is still one of the best episodes. Uh, and then they had the drugs episode, which was crazy. Um, yeah, I, I kind of like cops. I think I might put that one under good as well. Like it's still it's still fun to watch, so it goes under good. I, I am trying to go a little fast here because I have been doing this for over a half hour now, so uh, we'll I'll try not to babble on about these too much. Anyway, Curious George. I believe this is uh, this looks like one of the more recent incarnations of Curious George. I remember watching a little bit of Curious George back in the day before. Uh, before it was even animated, it was like more, uh, the, the original shorts I watched, they were, uh, they were like illustrations that they would like zoom in on when someone would talk and they'd have a narrator go over it. They show it during like, like, like Eureka's castle or like Sesame street or, you know, one of the, one of those shows where they would have like a little break and show something, you know, something animated. Um, the recent ones, I remember, you know, kind of liking it. Uh, but the uh, the recent ones I have not seen, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that never watched. <laughs> oh, boy, here we go. Danny Phantom. I did not watch this when it originally aired. Uh, there was a time when I actually abandoned Nickelodeon for a while. Like, between, between I think, Hey Arnold and Avatar. Like, I missed out on that whole era of... Uh, of cartoons for Nickelodeon that everyone else grew up with. And I missed out on, um, Danny Phantom is really, it, it's a great show. I like it. Uh, the creator, however, you know, uh, we're not going to get into that. Um, <laughs> it, it's a great concept. I love the idea. I love the, um, I love that it had, you know, a bit of an edge to it, uh, as opposed to a lot of, uh, you know, Nicktoon shows at the time. Um, I haven't watched the whole series, but I have watched quite a bit of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put it in great. I think, I think this one's great. Daria. Ooh. Now we're talking. Daria was a show that I never thought I would get into because I knew Daria from Beavis and Butthead and she, she came off as, she was like the just annoying character who would, you know, even though she was in the right, they kind of played her off as sort of a, a foil or a antagonist in the series, even though she really wasn't, but it, it just came off that way. Then she got her own show and I didn't think I would like it. And it turned out to be one of the best things ever. It was a very mature show that dealt with some very, uh, you know, very important issues and uh, it, it told it from the perspective of someone who just kind of was a little bit angsty and just kind of didn't care about a lot of things. And yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can, I can get behind that. Um, let's see, where do I even put this? I, uh, I think I, I think it's got to go under great because, and you know what, here's the thing about this show. I, I hate shows about school. I, I cannot stand shows that, that focus on kids in school because seriously, why, why would you want to watch a show 
about someone who's in school, you know, yeah, and they, they would air show cartoons like this, you know, in the afternoon or in the evening a, during a weekday. And it's like you spent a whole day at school. Why are you going to come home and watch someone go to school? You know, so but, you know, for the for the way it handled itself, I think I got to give Daria an A. Next up, we got Darkwing Duck. This is another show that I never watched when it originally aired. I have since watched some of it, and I did like it quite a bit. So, I, and I, I'm kind of upset that I missed out on it. Um, yeah, Jim Cummings is good, and the launch pad was in it. The villains were hilarious. Uh, yeah, Darkwing Duck. I gotta give him. I gotta give him a great, even though I I, I don't even have much of an attachment to it, but. From what I've seen, I, I really liked it. Uh, moving along, we have Dennis the Menace. Oh, God. Um, uh, Dennis the Menace uh, has not aged very well, unfortunately. Um, I remember the show. Uh, I found out that the show was mostly voiced by Phil Hartman. Like, he played a lot of the adults in the show. Like, he played Dennis's dad. And he played um, Mr. Wilson. And this was like a little bit before he got famous. Uh, he was such a great voice actor, too. It's a shame we lost him so soon. Um, but the show itself was just... I don't know. I, I think even as a kid, part of me sympathized with the adults that had to deal with Dennis. Because <laughs> he would just... He would make life miserable for everybody. And he seemed to could be completely oblivious to it, which I, I suppose is part of the joke, maybe. But, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put it in D. Dennis the Menace, uh, not aged well. It's kind of kind of mean-spirited in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't remember being particularly funny either. So, yeah, I'm putting that in D. Speaking of D, Denver, the last dinosaur. <laughs> um, speaking of a show that has not aged very well. <laughs> yeah, Denver uh, is not not aged that not well. It is very much a product of the 80s. Uh, it had a catchy theme song. Uh, I remember it being pretty harmless, though. Like, it was just a, you know, fun little show about a group of friends and their pal dinosaur who wore sunglasses and played guitar because we got to sell this to kids you know um the problem is i actually don't remember a whole lot about it you you bring this show up to anybody and they they pretty much just remember the theme song which to be fair was a very good theme song and where do i put it I feel like I haven't seen it in a while either, so it would be B or D. I mean, it hasn't aged well, but at the same time, it was kind of fun and harmless. gonna be a b it's it's a very low tier b on the on the tier list but I, I think just just because it's just fun that's all it is it's fun but it's not you know it's not terrible dexter's lab ah now we're talking dex the first series of dexter's lab before they ruined it which i believe is where this particular character model came from uh i think at that point, Gendy had left the show, and then they tried to resurrect Dexter, and it wasn't as good as the previous series, because of course it, it's not, it never is, Cartoon Network. Why don't you ever learn your lesson? Uh, but yeah, I love Dexter's Lab. It's one of the first original Cartoon Network programs. Uh, Gendy Tartakovsky is one of my favorite um, 
favorite creators right now. He's got a new show coming out on Adult Swim, and it looks sick. I can't wait for that. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna ignore the bad seasons of Dexter. Um, the only thing good that came out of the bad seasons of Dexter was that we learned a, a little bit more about Mandark. Like we got backstory for him, and we got like we got to meet his parents, who were uh, ironically like hippies, <laughs> which I think is I think is a great um, contrast to how he is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put Dexter in great. Dexter definitely deserves great. Oh boy, here's where people are gonna be mad at me again. Digimon. People love Digimon. I remember watching a little bit of the first season, like when they were trapped on the island, and I thought it was all right. I thought it was um, it was fine for what it is. Uh, I like the kids. I like the little Digimon characters. Uh, there you see uh, Gomamon, who is my favorite. Uh, even though I don't like Digimon that much, uh, I do really appreciate this character a lot. I think he's adorable, and I want him to be my friend. Um, but yeah, after that, I kind of lost interest. And the funny thing about Digimon is that it lived on for quite a while, and it, it like like you don't hear people talking about any of the other seasons of Digimon. It's oh, they always talk about the first season with like the uh, original kids that were in the digital world but like after that there was like new kids or whatever and then there was one that was like what was that data squad where they were like like law enforcement or whatever and nobody ever talks about that it's always this first season so that leads me to believe that the first season is about as good as it got as far as i know so I'm putting that in D. Let's D, D for Digimon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are going to be mad at me, I do, but I don't really care. People are mad at me every day. I don't really care. Ooh, this is interesting. This is uh, Dog City. Oh, wow. This is a show no one talks about. Dog City was, uh, I think it was another show that came out uh, kind of in the same category is like a lot of shows that try to capitalize on ninja turtles this was made by jim henson or jim henson studio dog city uh was it was he's like a you know detective and he's a, in a world full of dogs and yeah what made this show kind of interesting though is that the cartoon portion of it was actually a comic being written by uh like a muppet dog and like it, so it was very meta but the, the Muppet dog can, like, communicate directly with the character in the comic. So I, I think that's a very, like, interesting angle, for especially for a kid's show. So, yeah, unfortunately, I don't remember a whole lot about the show itself, but uh, I, remember, I remember it being all right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it in good. Just, just based on the, based on the concept alone, I think it, it earned that just for that. So now we're here at, at Doug, huh? Doug. I think many people know that I am not a fan of Doug. It has the distinction of being, I think, the very first Nicktoon, uh, alongside Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy. Doug has, like, everything I dislike about uh, a, a show or story. Uh, first of all, it's about high school, which right there is, like, uh, actually, was it high school or were they in, were they in like, eighth grade or whatever? I, I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. It's about school. I don't like it. Um, and Doug, the, Doug as a character is just so bland. Like, he's just a he's such a wuss like everything about him, everything freaks him out he has like this weird like uh, thing where he hallucinate like like it's like him trying to make sense of stuff that's going on but it always goes to an extreme and uh i liked mr dink that was about the only thing i liked about the show mr dink was great and pork chop was pretty cool too 
Uh, uh, Roger was okay as well. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm not a fan of Doug. So, goes in D. D for Doug. All right, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I do love me some Dragon Ball Z. Um, Dragon Ball Z was, uh, you know, I, I remember watching a little bit of the original Dragon Ball when they showed it at like 6 a.m., on uh on a weekday morning on network television uh i thought it was kind of interesting then they showed dragon ball z on uh the original toonami run and that's when i that's when i got into it um yes it does drag quite a bit uh especially during like the frieza arc but um i still love it i I love i love the characters i love the fights i love like the tension and the just pure testosterone about it. Uh, and I actually have to finish Super. I've never finished Dragon Ball Super. I have to get on that. Uh, and I like that they basically ignored GT. That was that was a good move on their part. I'm putting Dragon Ball Z in A. Def- it's a definite A. Duckman. Uh, Duckman is one of the best adult cartoons ever. It's uh, it aired I think on USA or something. Uh, it was voiced by um, uh, Jason Alexander. That was his name. It was uh, George from Seinfeld, who he himself is a great performer and has a great voice. Um, it was a really great show. It was very funny. Uh, I'm I'm actually gonna try and speed through this as much as possible. It was really funny. Uh, the uh, animation was uh, the, the character design was kind of weird because it was uh, was a class B Cuspo or whatever however you say that the same people that did like Rugrats and Our Real Monsters um, but I, I didn't mind them a lot it's very um, it's very stylized in a way that it's very appealing um, Duckman is going in A A for Duckman yes anyway <laughs> God I've been doing this a long time how many we got holy crap I have to move this along because I'm been recording for almost an hour now yeah i think i'm definitely gonna chop this up uh okay ducktales what can you say about ducktales the original ducktales too not the uh reboot ducktales which in itself is very good in fact in many ways i think it does surpass the original but ducktales was the original uh well it wasn't the first disney afternoon cartoon but it definitely uh was one of the best and uh, I think, in many ways, the original still holds up. As, as good as the reboot is, the original is so good. Uh, very well animated for the time, as to be expected, because Disney, they usually spare no expense in the animation department. Lots of great adventures, lots of imagination. They might solve a mystery or rewrite history. They get an S rank. Eek the Cat. Oh, my God. I periodically forget this show exists i know a lot of people uh really remember this show very well i actually didn't watch a whole lot of it i remember like catching little bits of it every now and then but that's about it uh man i i remember there was like other segments in the show there was like the terrible thunder lizards which was like there was like a gang of dinosaur guys and that's kind of fun how come that doesn't come back <laughs> Uh, yeah, but surprisingly, I, I didn't watch a whole lot of Eek the Cat. I know a lot of people are probably not going to like this, but uh, I'm putting that in Never Watch because I really, uh, unfortunately, don't have much to say about it. Ewoks. I reviewed this on Cartoon Clip Show. Um, I think I pretty much said everything I had to say about it there. Uh, Ewoks is... The first season is pretty good. They, they, like, they established lore for the Ewoks, and there was a lot of, like, really interesting adventures and stuff that they went on. But then Season 2 happened, and, uh, yeah, kind of declined a bit. Uh, I'm going to put Ewoks in D. Not up to par with the others. Not bad, though. Like, uh, let me put it this way. I don't think any of these shows are bad. I just don't i just can't get into them ben 10 probably maybe should should be down in hell no but um yeah the, these are these are just like the shows i i can't get into or recommend in good faith what the hell is this uh, 
Is this the Animals of Farthing Woods? I think this is like a British cartoon or something. Never watched it. Going and never watched. Uh, here's something else. What the hell is this? I actually don't know what this is. They look like otters or weasels. Looks very similar to the Animals of Farthing Woods. All right, I don't know what this is, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. It's hard to see. Again, the thumbnails really could have been picked better. They should have just picked what, you know, ha kept thumbnails with the show's name in it. Like, look, some of these did it well, and well, some are more iconic than others. But, you know, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to know? Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. Uh, this, I think, was uh, Filmation's longest-running TV series. Um, it was, uh, you know, like, based on a lot of the Bill Cosby... Uh, stand up and all that and i remember it had um I, I have watched some of this and it had some you know it was pretty funny moments and the characters are iconic i think this is where i have to start speeding things along um yeah it's it's a iconic enough show it was very it was a very important show uh even though bill cosby is attached to it i'm gonna put it in good just just because uh oh this is f is for family i believe this is a netflix show uh yeah i've not seen this one either unfortunately i have heard good things about this so don't take uh don't don't take this uh too harshly if i have to put stuff <laughs> put stuff and never watched um uh the flintstones again they could have picked a better screenshot just fred sleeping the Flintstones, one of the very first animated TV shows. If Actually, I think that it was the first animated TV show. Because a lot of cartoons back then were relegated to, like, intermissions and, and cinemas. And uh, Flintstones, which uh, borrowed heavily from the uh, Honeymooners. And I actually found out recently uh, Jackie Gleason was planning to sue and get the show taken off the air. But then he... Uh, he backed out at the last minute saying he didn't want to be known as the guy that uh, canceled the Flintstones. So uh, good on him. Uh, class act as always, Jackie Gleason. But yeah, what can you say about the Flintstones? Uh, I don't know if it's aged, like the original show at least, has aged particularly well. But it is a very important show. It's a, it, you know, for historical value, I'm actually going to put it in good. Just, just because it... it deserves to be you know it, it deserves to be recognized like that futurama ooh, you know i didn't like futurama at first i thought the uh i thought it was just kind of bland like the first couple episodes of it uh like the humor was dry and it was not that and uh, like the concept was interesting and the characters were kind of interesting but it was just kind of it did. It didn't find its energy. It didn't find the energy that it it later started to get, and later episodes of Futurama were pretty great. So, um, I'm putting Futurama in the great category. I, I think that's that's fair. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, Gargoyles, another show I didn't watch when it originally aired. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, there are a lot of like classic shows that I never uh, got around to watching. Imagine that. Gargoyles, uh, I did watch, of course, much later on. Gargoyles is one of the best shows ever. Uh, it's very well done. Uh, great lore, great characters, great voice actors. Uh, another mature show that you know, you know, treated its audience seriously. Uh, that that gun safety episode is iconic, man. They actually got banned from TV, if I remember correctly. Gargoyles easily goes in S rank. George of the Jungle. Oh God, I forgot this existed. <laughs> um, this is the um, the remake from uh, Cartoon Network from the two thousands. Sometimes I don't remember. Uh, I really don't remember much about it. <laughs> uh, it, it 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 sure existed, didn't it? I don't know. Uh, I think it's forgettable. So, uh, 
I didn't remember. I, I found out that it actually had a second season, but it, it aired only on YouTube. And from what I've seen, the second season is weird. Like, bizarre. Uh... It's you know it's a very forgettable show so I'm putting it in hell no it it probably rests somewhere between D and F but uh, yeah it um it I'm I'm putting it in uh, I'm just putting it in F because I'm trying to hurry this along how much we got left oh my god all right moving along real Ghostbusters real Ghostbusters again one of the best movie ad- uh, adapted TV shows uh it was produced by Dan Aykroyd so it sure as hell better be I did a cartoon clip show on it, and I neglected to mention any of the Q5 stuff, which uh, Phelous actually uh, informed me. Uh, well, he didn't inform me, but he did a video about. And yeah, after that, uh, it kind of made sense of how the later seasons kind of sucked. They weren't all bad, in my opinion, but uh, some of them were just kind of eh. I want to put this in S tier. I want to put this... But because the later seasons were not so great, it's going in A for great. The first, like, two seasons are amazing. After that, it just started to decline, unfortunately. Kind of like Dexter's Lab. Listen, if you got a formula that works, don't mess with it, all right? G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, this right here. I used to watch this all the time. Uh, I, I, at some point have to do a cartoon clip show on it. Cause I've, I'm getting to the point where I've reviewed almost every GI Joe cartoon. Uh, absolutely love GI Joe. I think a lot of it still holds up today. Uh, the animation's not the best, but, um, like the, I, in many ways, the show does still hold up. There's a lot of action, a lot of suspense, uh, again, mature themes and uh, a lot of really great, uh, great moments even some great humor incidentally look up the episode with the viper for those of you who have not seen that one i'm putting that in great if uh, if the animation held up a little bit better i'll put it up in s go bots yes it came before the transformers but that doesn't mean it's great uh <laughs> Uh, believe it or not, I actually watched more of this than I did of Transformers back in the day. Um, but to be honest, I, I don't remember a whole lot about it. I know Hanna-Barbera actually did this show, and I, to this day, that, that blows my mind. But, uh, they, during the 80s and 90s, I think Hanna-Barbera was trying to focus more on action and stuff like that. So... I am going to put this in not up to par with the others. Just because we, again, we need to move along here. Uh, what is this? Mazinger Z. Ooh. I've actually never watched Mazinger Z. So that's going right and never watched. <laughs> oh, boy. Gotta love that classic anime look, though. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, as represented by Skeletor, because, of course... <laughs> <laughs> um Skeletor of uh, Skeletor, yes, Skeletor. Yeah. <laughs> Do my Skeletor impression. You royal boob <laughs> Beast Man He Man uh, Ma- uh Masters of the Universe, of course, uh, you know has not all of it has held up, but it is still quite a fun show to watch so i i am gonna put it in good just because of skeletor (laughs) oh boy the uh the tears have gotten all messed up now okay there we go yeah um i i feel now if this was the 2002 masters of the universe hey that'd go up at least one rank uh but the filmation one still holds a dear place in my heart as well it has for many people who grew up during that era. But, uh, again, we got to move on. Uh, oh, God. This is Hercules. This is the animated Hercules from the 60s. Uh, I remember watching, like, one episode of this on a VHS. Yeah, it's not very good. (laughs) 
it's uh he, he, it's like hercules and he had like a magic ring or something and he had a sidekick who was a who was a centaur and he kind of looked like a bootleg version of one of the centaurs from fantasia uh eh, yeah going an f hell no kind of an oddity really uh might be like fun to watch for a laugh but uh yeah not not really not really uh holding up very well hey arnold i did not watch a lot of hey arnold when it originally aired i should have because later on i watched quite a bit of it and this show is pretty great like this show holds up very well in fact they uh it holds up so well that they revived it and did the jungle movie which i did a review on hey arnold deals with a lot of uh interesting issues specifically with helga here and uh yeah, you know what? Hey Arnold has to get S rank. That's uh that's a good show right there. Uh Inspector Gadget. Uh I don't know how well Inspector Gadget has held up. I'm going to put Inspector Gadget in good only for nostalgic value and eh, some of the humor was still pretty good. Also the theme song. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a good probably probably doesn't deserve to be up and be but yeah i i think we'll put it there jackie chan adventures yet another show i didn't watch when it originally aired uh there's quite a bit of that isn't there um i did watch a bit of it uh later on and uh, i did like it quite a bit so i'm gonna go ahead and put that in good uh maybe if i had a stronger attachment to it it would go up to a but I did really like it. And maybe if I get around to watching more of it, I could change my mind on it, put it up in great, but I'm going to put it in good for now. Gem and the holograms. Gem and the holograms is a bad show. That's going in F. <laughs> a lot of people really like gem and the holograms. They've, they've held on to it for the nostalgic value. But if you watch that show, it, it certainly does not hold up as well as a lot of other 80 shows. Um, yeah, I, I Gem in the Hologram is, is bad. Is it any wonder the movie was bad? Because the source material was not very good. You want like a, a good female, and that's the whole thing. It's like always oh, the good female role model. There are better female role models in the 80s. In fact, I have a feeling we'll run into one somewhere down the line here. Oh boy, let's move along. The Jetsons. Uh, the Jetsons. I think in many ways this does belong in in good because it's uh, again it's a very iconic show and it's it's in the same vein as the uh the flintstones it's basically you know the same idea just you know from a different perspective it's in the future instead of uh, stone age times and i do remember liking the jetsons quite a bit so i'm, I'm putting that in b johnny bravo ah yes another one uh johnny bravo I think I'm going to put that also in good. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to move along here because, God, this is taking forever. Um, yeah, the, the first series of Johnny Bravo was really good. And then after that, like when they – there was like a season where they introduced a bunch of new characters. And they, they like lowered Johnny's IQ significantly. He just became like an idiot when he should just be kind of a – just a lovable goof who just can't get laid, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I like Johnny Bravo a lot. Again, it's another one of those cases like Dexter where they, the show lasted for far too long and then they made too many changes and it was not very good. Uh, but yeah, Johnny Bravo is still fun. Johnny test, however, is not, I, I gave this show a fair chance and I did not care for it very much. And then Cartoon Network insisted on shoving it down people's throats. So, no, that that's going in hell no. Uh, Justice League, Justice League Unlimited. This is one of the best superhero shows of all time. It still holds up. It's still great to watch. The tearjerker episodes will just destroy you. And, yeah, the, just I don't have enough good things to say about Justice League. Uh, Kim Possible. Didn't watch it when it first came out. Watched a little bit of it later on. Kind of liked it. Again, 
It's about school. I did not like the school part about it, but I did like the whole spy thing. I like the characters. Uh, I'm putting that one in good. There we go. King of the Hill. Never a huge fan of King of the Hill, unfortunately. Um, there were a couple episodes here and there that I kind of liked. I think, in my opinion, the best episode of the series was the one where they were... Uh, <laughs> the one where they were uh, volunteer firemen. <laughs> that one was really funny. Um, I'm going to put that one in not up to par with the rest. I know a lot of people really like it, but I don't. Uh, I, I I think it's okay. I don't hate it. Again, I don't hate these shows, except maybe Ben, but uh, it's just not my thing. The Legend of Korra. The Legend of Korra, I think, gets a very bad rap. Um, it has a lot of problems and I blame the problems mostly on the production because originally this was only supposed to be a one-off season and then they wanted more and then they kind of tripped over themselves and they tried to make, you know, a, a long narrative and it uh, didn't quite work out. Um, I still think it's a very good show. Uh, the way I see it, um, the seasons were really good on their own. If they had changed the order by which they did things, like if the, if what happened in season two happened as like the series finale, that would have worked out a lot better in my opinion. But, uh, it, it was again, production issues with it. And, um, because of that, I'm going to put it in good. It is a very good show. I think again, it gets a very bad rap. But I, I think it does. Uh, I think it's worthy enough to be at least a B. Next up is Looney Tunes. All of the Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes predates me, and I used to watch a lot of the old Looney Tunes cartoons when they showed them on television, and they still hold up in my opinion. Looney Tunes is iconic. Looney Tunes is S tier. Mighty Max. Ooh. This show needs to be on DVD. Like, seriously, I don't understand what, how this has not gotten on DVD yet. Um, some rights issues, I'm guessing. Somebody owns it that's being stingy about it. Mighty Max was a, a fun adventure show. Uh, again, it was a very mature show, especially during, like, the series finale. Uh, I am putting Mighty Max in great because I think it, I think it deserves to be great. Um, I wish again, they would release it. I kind of want to do a review on it at some point, but, um, I can't do that without any good footage. So we'll have to deal with it for now. Yeah. Mighty Max was a great show. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> what is this? A guy staring at a cake. I actually don't know what that is. So I'm just going to move on. Muppet babies, the original Muppet babies. Uh, I used to like Muppet babies. It was a fun show. Uh, I like that they used the uh, clips from like movies and stuff to like like enhance the uh, the whole imagination aspect of it. Um, characters were fun. It was a pleasant little kid show, so I think it deserves to be in good. Oh boy, My Little Pony. Uh, <laughs> friendship is magic. Um, I have actually watched some of this and I will give them credit that they made a show, a, a very good show out of, you know, what we're going to look at next. And that's the OG, my little pony, uh, which by the way, I've only watched a little bit of this as well. Like less than this one. Uh, I remember that like the first like pilot episode where they were fighting like some demon guy, uh, other than that, uh, I think I'm going to just put this in never watched because that's all I've, I know about it. And, uh, from what I've heard, the original show does not hold up very well. So that's going to go in never watched. Oh God, Naruto. Uh, I'll admit I liked Naruto for a little while, but uh, the same thing happened with uh, this that happened with Bleach. 
I kind of lost interest in it after a while, and I kind of got sick of it. A lot of the characters in it are kind of infuriating and stupid. I'm putting it in D. I think I think that's fair. D for Naruto. Oh, the OG Ninja Turtles. Uh, still fun to watch. I don't think all the episodes hold up that well. I think the uh, the first season, at least the first and second season, definitely. Um, so I'm going to put the OG Turtles in good. Uh, no, you know what? I'm putting it in great. I, th- I think it deserves great. Like, a lot of it's fun to watch still. The OG 60s Spider-Man. Now we're talking. Uh, I, I watched a lot of this growing up. I did enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, it is funny to watch nowadays. Uh, there's a reason why this show has spawned a lot of memes. Um, the first season is silly. Second season, they tried to do a little bit of, uh, give it a little bit of an edge. So I'm putting it in good. One Punch Man. What is that doing in here? Uh, I do like One Punch Man quite a bit. Uh, it's very funny. I haven't seen season two yet, but, uh, from what I've seen, I really do like it. It's a very interesting take on superheroes. I'm putting it up in great. Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates. Ooh. This is another show that definitely needs a DVD release. This was a great show, and I want to review it, but I can't get good footage of it. Um, it's um, it's another version of Peter Pan where they uh, they spend more time in Neverland and go on adventures and stuff. Uh, very well animated too. I believe this was TMS. So it got kind of the same treatment as like Animaniacs and Batman got. This show was one of the first instances where I remember having empathy for a villain. That's how good this show was. And I was very young at the time. And, uh, the way they portrayed Captain Hook in this was great. They actually humanized him very well. They showed like backstory about him and, um, you know, like how he didn't have a very good childhood and all that. And I actually started to feel bad for him. This cannot get anything less than an S rank. In my opinion, I wish it was more available. I really do. Cause people really need to see the show. I hate that it's becoming forgotten about. And if I do ever find good footage of it, I'm going to do a review on it. Cause it definitely deserves it. The Pokemon anime. I do not care for the Pokemon anime very much. Um, I did kind of like it at the beginning. And then after that, I just kind of eh, lost interest. But uh, whatever. Pokemon anime gets in D. Powerpuff Girls. If we're talking about the original Powerpuff Girls, then yes, I do really love the original Powerpuff Girls. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it belongs up in A. Right alongside Dexter. Reboot. Ah, now we're talking. Reboot may not have held up very well, but it's still a very... like It's a show you can tell people were passionate about. And it was one of the very first, if not... I think it was actually the first CGI animated TV show. So it has that very distinction. It definitely got better as it went along. Uh, The later seasons were really good. Uh, left off on a cliffhanger, unfortunately. And of course, uh, reboot the guardian code is a pile of hot garbage. Did a review on that. I'm putting reboot in does it belong A or B. I'm gonna go ahead and give it an A. It's, it's great. It, it, it's primitive by today's standards, but I think it is still worth watching. There's a lot of, there's a lot to like about it still. Ren and Stimpy, oh boy, yes, this is this is getting a great ranking, an A ranking, uh, a show that pushed the envelope a lot, and I uh, I remember watching quite a bit of it, and it's still pretty funny to this day. Even again, if the co-creator of it is kind of a scumbag, anyway, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, <laughs> let's move along. Uh, absolutely love this show. Uh, it's one of the one of the best of the Disney afternoon. I think I'm going to give that one an A rank. 
the hell is this? Rocket Robin Hood? <laughs> I think that's Rocket Robin Hood. I believe this is the show that aired alongside Hercules. Um, this was a strange show, but I never really watched much of it. The only reason I know about it is because there actually was an episode of Spider-Man that was basically an episode of this. It was it, shot for shot the same thing, but they just kind of drew Spider-Man over Rocket Robin Hood there. Uh, it was very bizarre. Uh, unfortunately, I have not seen much of it, so I'm going to put that in that category. Never watched. Rugrats. Rugrats was a good show in its own right. Um, never really got into it as much as like Ren and Stimpy and other Nicktoons, uh, but it was a good, it was a good show. I will give it a good ranking. Sailor Moon. Never really watched a lot of Sailor Moon. Uh, I remember watching a little bit of it on like Toonami when they aired it alongside Dragon Ball. Uh, it was all right, I guess. I think in, in good faith, I won't give this a B ranking. Sam and Max. Ooh, <laughs> this show was strange. Um, I don't remember if it was really great, but it's so strange that it's definitely worth watching. So I'm giving it a B ranking. Samurai Jack. Oh boy. Samurai Jack, one of the best shows ever. That is an easy S rank, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people lately have been uh, calling the like calling out the ending to it, the one that they uh, came up with a while ago. Uh, but I, I still think the show is is definitely still one of the best. Samurai Pizza Cats. Oh my god, uh, I actually didn't watch this originally. Uh, a lot of people really really like the show. I watched it a lot later on, and uh, honestly, I don't see why people loved it. It's not that great. I think uh, the whole thing was they were trying to bring it over to the U.S. and like they lost the scripts for the uh, for the original Japanese audio, so they like made up a bunch of stuff. And in that regard, I can uh, I can definitely. Uh, uh, respect it but honestly I never really got into it unfortunately it's gonna get a D rank again not not the hate category so there Scooby Doo I believe that's what's new Scooby Doo wonder why they put that one on here who made this list anyway this is all bizarre uh what's new Scooby Doo was okay it gets, uh, it's going to get a, a B ranking. Uh, if that was the original Scooby-Doo or Mysteries Incorporated, then I would definitely, um, definitely put it up a bit higher, but uh, it gets a B ranking. It was, it was fine. Okay. So remember what I said about Gem and the Holograms about being a good female role model for girls in the, in the eighties. Here we have Shira. Shira was better. Shira was a hundred times better. In fact, I, as much as it pains me to admit this, I think Shira is better than He-Man. I know it's it's hard to believe, because Shira was a more interesting show. Shira and Shira, the villains, took over, and the heroes were the underdogs, and He-Man was the opposite. And when when the heroes are on top, it's not always so interesting it's fun but it's not always so interesting when the villain when the heroes are the underdogs that's when that's when your show gets good so there you go shira better than the netflix shira in my opinion and yes i i know what i just said there deal with it silverhawks <laughs> silverhawks um yeah i remember really liking silverhawks i like the characters i like the whole concept behind it where they have like these cyborg characters that had to like basically give up their humanity to, you know, fight evil in space. But the whole message behind like, Oh, it's uh it's not, you know, the skin that makes you a human being. It's the, the, the what's inside that counts or whatever. I'm giving that a great ranking, great animation too. Also bluegrass is one of the best things ever. Bluegrass is a, 
There he is way back there. <laughs> he flew the spaceship with a key tar. How much more 80s can you get? I don't know what this guy is. What is this? <laughs> Some nerdy kid. I've never seen that. I'm just going to put him there because I, I can't think right now. And I got to uh, I got to keep moving here. The Simpsons. Uh, the Simpsons. One of the longest running TV shows of all time. Mm, yeah, you know, this whole the whole thing about The Simpsons was, you know, good years ago and nowadays not so great. And in my opinion, it was a very gradual decline and not really you know there wasn't like a point where the simpsons got bad like, like there's still laughs to be found in it and you know because of it's because of how it is i think it gets an uh, a rank um it it i think has gotten better over time but i do feel like it's it ran its course long ago and probably should just probably should just you know end all right, we're uh, we're approaching the end here. Uh, thank God. God, I've been doing this a long time. The Smurfs. I remember liking the Smurfs quite a bit. I'm gonna put the Smurfs in B, because the Smurfs are are fun, and uh, they had a, they had a very magical, enchanted world they lived in. Then you got the Snorks, which were not as interesting as the Smurfs. They going in D. <laughs> oh God, it's getting late. Um, I didn't expect this to go on this long. I'm going to see uh, how how this video turns out. I may or may not split it up. South Park. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, South Park. South Park uh, is one of the best shows ever. Their their commentary on society is just on point. Their, the, the jokes are funny. The characters are memorable. South Park deserves to be right next to The Simpsons, in my opinion. Spider-Man, the 90s Spider-Man. Um, I remember watching this a lot, but, uh, I don't think this one holds up as well as some of the other Spider-Man cartoons. I'm going to give that a good because it was good. Uh, Hey, it's in the same category as the original Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, I, I did like this show quite a bit. So I'm, I think B is a fair one for it. This one, however, Spider-Man unlimited that goes in the hell no category. Cause that one was not very good. <laughs> Um, it was intended to be sort of a continuation of the 90s Spider-Man, I think, where he like goes into space and he lands on a planet of furries and he fights Venom, I think was the bad guy who like snuck on a rocket and some, I don't know. It's not, it's eh. static shock. Another show that I unfortunately didn't watch a whole lot of, um, I didn't watch a whole lot of like this era WB stuff. So, uh, but I, I have seen some episodes of it. I'm going to give that a good static shock is a very good show. Tailspin. Ah, yes. Tailspin. Uh, one of my favorite of the Disney afternoon cartoons more. I think overall, um, I, I think overall, uh, DuckTales is a better show, but, uh, Tailspin is a personal favorite, so I'm going to give it a great. Like Again, DuckTales is definitely the better of the shows, but uh, Tailspin is uh, my personal favorite. See, this is how you be a good critic. you got to put aside your own personal biases. Teen Titans. Teen Titans was a really good show. I'm putting that in great, just despite Teen Titans Go. Uh, the Critic uh, with John Lovitz. This was a very funny show for its time. Um, it has not aged very well cause it, it relied quite a bit on, uh, quite a bit of, uh, like pop, pop culture at the time. Uh, it, a lot of shows that rely on topical humor don't really, uh, fare very well over time, but I did really like it. This one's getting an A rank. It's going down there. Okay. There we go. I think it definitely deserves an A rank. Here we go. The tick. One of the best superhero comedies ever. Uh, the Tick cartoon was really good. I've heard good things about the uh, live action series. But uh, the cartoon, in my opinion, was very great. Thundercats. Gee, you should know my opinion on Thundercats by now. I had a whole video about it. 
Tiny Toon Adventures, again, another show that relied very much on uh, topical, you know, subject matter. Uh, it's still very funny. It's still, you know, uh, the characters are memorable and, and very, uh, very endearing. Uh, unfortunately, it has not aged as well as Animaniacs. Uh, it's still very good, so it, it doesn't go S, but I will give it an A rank because it does... It does have a lot going for it still. It is. It does not hold up as well as Animaniacs, unfortunately. But it it is still. Uh, it is still a good watch. Nickelodeon's TMNT. Yes, this is going to get an S rank. If I can get up there, I kind of got. <laughs> this show is great. This is my favorite version of the Ninja Turtles, even more so than the '80s Turtles. I I grew up with this. But I, I love this one. I absolutely... I, I It's such a great show. My favorite version of Splinter ever. Shredder in this was great. He is a legitimate threat. I love how it pays tribute to every version of the Ninja Turtles in some way. They make reference to it everywhere. Um, it's really good. I, it's some, some purists of the original Ninja Turtles don't give it a chance. But I do, I do think it, it deserves a lot more... Uh, a lot more praise for what it does. And it, again, another show that took its audience seriously. Tom and Jerry. Ooh, we're talking the original Tom and Jerry. If we're talking original Tom and Jerry, that's an S rank. Cause that was hilarious. That belongs right up there with the Looney Tunes, in my opinion. Uh, what the hell is this? <laughs> what the hell? What? 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 Eh, I don't know what that is. Uh, next up, Top Cat. I remember liking Top Cat. Um, I think this holds up a little bit better than most uh, Hanna Barbera shows, because the characters were very—they um, had a lot of personality and they were very likable. I'm putting Top Cat in good. Totally Spies. I'm putting Totally Spies in the D category because I'm not a big fan of Totally Spies. Uh, I'm just going to breeze through these here. Uh, Transformers. The original G1 Transformers. Um, I think that show is very good. I did not grow up with Transformers, believe it or not. I didn't want, watch the original show very much. Um but I have since watched it, and yes, I do. I do love it very much. So I'm. Uh, unfortunately, it does not hold up very well. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens in the show. There's a lot of like production problems, and season three was after you know the events after the movie were kind of spotty, and uh, yeah, I, I think B is a, a fair place for it, uh, as well for Voltron as well. Again. It does not hold up as well as it should, but the characters are great. It's a very memorable show. Uh, Voltron Legendary Defender, however, would probably get an S rank, in my opinion. Maybe an A. As S or A. But uh, the OG show, good. Still still good to watch. Really, uh, you know, a lot of nostalgic value. Um, very iconic shows. Uh, they definitely deserve a, a B, B rank. Woody Woodpecker. Uh, I don't know if Woody Woodpecker holds up alongside of like the Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry, but I, I do really like Woody Woodpecker. Still very funny. You get an A rank. X Men: The Animated Series. At least I think that's what that is. <laughs> Again, better thumbnails. Jeez. Uh, one of the best superhero shows ever. That is not going in A. I'm putting that in S. That definitely deserves it. Um, later seasons were kind of eh, but, uh, for the most part, again, another show that took its audience seriously. So deserves an S Yogi bear, Yogi bear, I think deserves a B rank because, uh, he's a likable cartoon character. Um, if we're talking about like the original Yogi bear shorts, uh, yeah, I would, I would say B rank. So uh, that's that's fair enough. Young Justice. I liked Young Justice, but I never really got into it. Uh, I've been meaning to uh, 
I've been meaning, you know what, let me, let me move these up here, so, just so it's easier for me, um, Young Justice was a, a good show, from what I've seen, uh, I did enjoy it, but I'm, I never got into it as much as other people, I'm putting that in B rank, and finally, Yu-Gi-Oh, D rank, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh anime exists only to be funny, in my opinion, <laughs> If we're talking about, like, like, the first season with Yugi, uh, yeah, I never really got into it. Uh, I mostly, well, I, I found the card game first, and then I found the show, and then I tried to watch the show to get in, like, learn how to play the card game, and the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh!, they didn't even play the card game right. In fact, they still didn't play it right in later seasons. So, yeah, screw it. I'm not, not, not my thing. Um... Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D, uh, no, it was GX, no, GX was the one where they were in school. 5Ds, however, is my favorite of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Yes, the one with car games on motorcycles. That one is actually really good. That is one of the best protagonists the show has ever had. Alrighty, uh, it has been over an hour and 30 minutes at this point. And here's, uh, I think... I think this is pretty uh, pretty spot on. I think some of these are, are a little bit debatable. Um, some of them should be up. Like, like I could, like, organize these in order of, like, you know, highest B rank to lowest B rank, but I could, yeah, I'm not, I can't be bothered right now. <laughs> um, but, yeah, these are, these are my picks. Uh, you probably don't agree with a lot of these, and that's fine. You can go to tiermaker.com and make your own tier list and uh, do uh, you know do what you want with it. But I, I feel like this is I feel like I was as fair as possible with with these. So last but not least, let's go through the S ranks and pick one to stand above all others. This is not gonna be easy. <laughs> Oh man, so much to choose from. Uh, Animaniacs, uh, Avatar is so good. Justice League is good. Looney Tunes are the OGs, man. How do you make this decision? <laughs> it's so hard. All right. Um. I think Okay, th again, this is not an easy decision. I think I think I have to give it to Animaniacs. Cuz all of these shows as great as they are, like I I was considering giving it to Looney Tunes because they were the originals. But Animaniacs did what... The Looney Tunes laid out the foundation for shows like Animaniacs. And Animaniacs did the best with what the Looney Tunes gave, in my opinion. The, the show is... It still holds up. It's still funny. It's still fun to watch. Avatar has a really great you know story and all that. Um, but... I feel like I, I feel like Avatar might not age as well. Like it still holds up today, but how? Well, mm, maybe maybe it will hold up as as time goes on. Yeah, you know what? I'm okay with this. Animaniacs is one of the best shows ever. So yeah, there. So there is my list. I do what I want. So there we go. Uh, oh, is this the guy that made the list? Uh, pick better screenshots, guy. Jeez. So there we have it. My tier, uh, my uh, tier ranking list of cartoon shows from all different eras. Some don't belong here. Some are like weird, and I don't know what 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 these are. I think that's the Animals of Farthing Woods, but yeah. Uh, no, I don't know what the hell these are. I don't know where he got those from. Uh, but yeah, 
I would actually, I wouldn't mind doing another one of these if, uh, hey, if anybody wants to like make one of these for me and, uh, maybe I can, you know, do another video on this, hopefully one, not this long, but, um, yeah, if anybody wants to s submit an, another, uh, another tier list to me, somebody wants to make one of these with, uh, maybe some better picks or something. Um, and Hey, it doesn't even have to be for this channel. It could be for one of my other channels. Maybe you want me to rank video games. I'll post it on the gameplay channel, but yeah, uh, I think that'll do it because this video has gone on for a very long time. So, uh, yeah, this is my ranking. This is how I feel about all these. I didn't use any of the bottom ones because why, why bother? Uh, you might not agree, but again, it's my opinion. Uh, feel free to let me know if any of these should be up higher. And maybe I'll read that comment one day. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got to get back to doing some other stuff. Uh, again, if somebody, if somebody wants to like make any better tier lists for me, um, maybe do something a little bit different. I don't know. I'll, I'll see. We'll see how, how well this video does. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And I'll see you guys later.